what's up y'all what's up y'all it's me erica it's friday what's going on oh listen that means i don't have my seatbelt on do you know that thing will go that thing will run the entire time so when y'all be like erica put your seatbelt on as long as you don't hear them ding noises the seatbelt is on all right go ahead and like subscribe and comment let the diva know you stopped by it is Friday. It's my favorite day of the week for the, for those who don't know, for the newbies. Shout out to all the new subscribers. Thank you for um, supporting. Proceed with caution. <laughs> um, just nothing really to talk about. I did write some things down, random things or whatever. But I did want to come back to what I was talking about yesterday in terms of trusting your intuition and being listening to yourself listening to yourself um i was about to stop and get some coffee but that line was so disrespectful at starbucks so what do y'all order from starbucks put it down in the comments what y'all order from star what's your order from starbucks i have so many things that i like from starbucks so it, it doesn't but i can't eat i can't um can't do everything let me see what's going on with this scarf now this is not the orange scarf that that bitch gave me um, this is another orange scarf that I have and this one is actually if you had a good if you could see it really well it's like almost fluorescent that's how bright it is it's a it's almost fluorescent anyway let's see I feel weird what's going on so anyways um what are we talking about so nothing 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 on Fridays nothing really to talk about just talking about um, whatever comes to mind no real agenda or anything like that um another allegation came out about r kelly uh, another girl says when she, he had sex with her when he she was 13 and i guess she continued to have sex with him because he gave her herpes now this is the second woman that said she's gotten herpes from r kelly and um when she was 17 she got she contracted herpes from him so I don't know I mean I was you know this morning I tweeted I wonder how we would respond to if this was a 52 year old woman entertaining 21 and 23 year old men raping them when they're 13 14 15 16 and 17 years old having them live in in, in her house running around with them um, honey Elizabeth Warren she's so she's so tiresome she just every time I see her name it's like an instant drain of and my energy is drain Elizabeth Warren and Warren is so draining she drains the shit out of me her thing just came up her name just came up saying she want to break up she want to break up tech giants like Google who did she say Amazon and Facebook I've been and told y'all niggas but y'all still have Facebook accounts I deactivated my Facebook account as soon as that Cambridge analytical stuff came back Cambridge analytics I was like I'm good on Facebook I'll keep it I'll keep the page so that I could have like an archival of my stuff and pictures and videos and stuff that I have been posting but I'm not about to give them any more information Facebook I've always said was the FBI it was the FBI's phone book like you can find out anything about anyone because they, they y'all we tell everything and we tell everything in an effort to connect to people and it can be used against you it's all you're used as like fucking um test you know testing like you're it's a testing a testing environment for corporations um basically basically a sociological test for um behavioral patterns in in terms of the demographics for particular corporations but anyways i wonder what will happen if r kelly was a woman same age sexually abusing and raping little boys because it's like and then tashina arnold she she did the whole why do we hold other why do we hold our people accountable but when other people do it we're it, it's like crickets or some shit she said girl what I do not like that. Like, it's like, 
if white people do it, black people should be able to do it too, even though it's at the detriment of your community. Like, and then and there's some comments that keep saying, you know, if R. Kelly goes to jail, then what? What does that stop? No, because let me tell you, abuse against women and children will not stop. Okay. Even the laws and sentencing guidelines for offenses when it comes to children, when it comes to rape, when it comes to women are very lenient. Um, children are more, it's more because everybody, no one wants to say that they don't care about children. Like I was talking about pro-lifers yesterday, um, talking about a lot of conservatives are pro-life, right? But then you also back the idea that children are able to be separated from their parents if their parents are committing these, they're illegal immigrants. So it's like, do you really care about children? Even though you know that people and people have been telling you separating children from their parents has a debt, has an effect, has a traumatic effect on these children. These children grow up to be adults who contribute or not contribute to society, who turn to be adults that are broken. It's like, you don't care. They don't care about kids. I don't care what nobody says. They don't care about no motherfucking kids. They don't care about kids. They want to be able to still abuse children. Um, I, I don't know. Anyways, I just wanted to know what we would think. What, what, what would be the response if R. Kelly was a woman? If R. Kelly was a 52-year-old woman out here doing all the things but see, our society, especially in ethnic groups, our society, they look at young boys having sex with older women as some type of rite of passage to manhood. Like you have to be essentially raped by a older woman in order to say like oh you a man now that is promoted within our community sit in any barber shop on any given saturday and see the how the conversation goes Ugh. Ugh. gross it's 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 a it's a it's a detri it's a detriment to our community and you want to be able to do what harvey harvey weinstein has lost everything now he has lost everything his trial is gonna start this week i think they tried to postpone his trial and the the judge was really mad like y'all not about to do this again and keep doing it again and again so no we're not about to do this i guess the r kelly um actual interview i'm mad that i actually posted my opinion about the r without seeing the full i hate i'm really mad that i actually um okay until I actually see the whole thing. I hate to do that. I hate to do that. And I that's why I was like at the beginning of the video, like, how the hell was this damn interview 15, 10 or 15 minutes? And you said you were sitting with the nigga for 90 minutes. I was really confused. But then I was like, okay, well, is this is this it? Like, is this the is this the is this the interview? Uh, but apparently it comes on tonight. So I really hate that I actually already gave my point of view. But I mean, I guess nothing's really going to change. It's, R. Kelly is not going to admit anything. He's not. He's going to deny everything. And who's going to admit that they're raping young girls? I mean, who? Nobody is going to admit that. Nobody from Roman Polanski to Woody Allen to motherfucking who else? Um, Woody Allen, Roman Polanski, Elvis Presley. Uh, uh, who else? Who's the man? That was with his that married his cousin Jerry Lee Lewis. Um, you know, no one is going to say anything. No one, you know, no one's gonna say anything. I don't fucking know. I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> okay, so are you guys watching Real Housewives of New York? It's back on. So new Real Housewives of New York. Now, you know, Luann used to be one of my favorites, and now I'm looking at uh, Luann. Have, have, okay. A long time ago, I want to say about four years ago, they showed this special on Luann and how she met and, and her life and how she, how she, you know, just her journey. And Luann has, has always been a free-spirited party girl. A free-spirited party girl 
I will marry whoever wants to marry me. She just so happened to marry a fucking, um, what is he, uh, um, what was her account? The, the people who, he belongs to the family of the people who, um, donated the Statue of Liberty to America and helped build the Suez Canal. So they had money. So that's the reason why she stayed with that man and had children with that man for so long. But at the core, Luann Deliceps is a party girl, alcoholic. Her and Dorinda, they both alcoholics, even though I like Dorinda. Dorinda is my, now Dorinda is my fucking favorite, especially when she has a few martinis. But she's an alcoholic too. Luann is an alcoholic and they're trying to navigate their friendships as two alcoholics and holding and, and the reason why they can't stand each other is because when they look at each other they see each other and they don't like what they see and so they don't like each other for that reason that's why Dorinda and Luann cannot get along because they are a mirror image of each other they talk about Bethany Bethany um I think they're gonna pay a lot a lot of attention to Bethany a lot of attention to Luann this season because Bethany's boyfriend um, was found dead. I don't know what, it was no foul play. I don't know, know how the story ended up, but it was an on and off again relationship and she really loved this guy and he was just found dead in Trump Tower. Just, it was very, very random, very, very unexpected. I don't even think the dude was sick. I don't, did he kill himself? I, I feel like he killed himself because she kept saying, you're not in pain anymore or anything like that. Y'all got to be careful because people really be functioning depressed. You understand what I'm saying? Like walking around like everything is fine. Walking around like everything is okay and really be depressed and really be always thinking about not being on this earth anymore. And it's that's why when I actually watched the episode with, of Real Housewives of Atlanta because I wanted to see why Nini was upset now mind you this is the 16th episode and I haven't watched any of the episodes so I really don't know what's going on but what I saw with Nini is somebody in pain and when Marlo was upset that she wouldn't answer the phone and she's like people are out here killing themselves and I and my your husband who is in the hospital told me to go check on you and you not answering the phone that you know I could see where Marlo was upset about that. Like, bitch, people out here are fucking committing suicide. And you not answering the phone, your husband said you're not really in a bad place. You're not really in a good place. And I come check on you. I understood where Marlo was coming from. And I understood where, where Nini was coming from. Because I was just like, why she didn't answer the door? Why didn't she text back? I understand you want to. And she was like, bitch, support me. But I want I was trying to support you, bitch. I came to check on your ass after your husband said you was not in a good place. What the fuck are you talking about? Um I don't know why Portia felt like she was threatened. Bitch, get, and it wasn't even like the way that it, that article that I read made it seem was that Candy and Portia were being messy. That is, that's where, because I read that article, but what I saw was her being okay. She was a little drunk, but her being okay, but not being okay when the damn cameraman went through. But I don't know why Portia was like, I'm scared. I do not care for Portia at all, and I do not care for Candy at all. But I found myself enjoying that episode, like laughing at Nini. Um, Nini gets on my nerves, but Nini is very, she has a really good, um, like, personality for television. Um, but yeah, uh, anyways, I don't know how I got, but people being depressed. That's what I was talking about. People being depressed and watching what they're doing. And I didn't know that, that's why I was like, Bethany's boyfriend, he just died out the blue. So I feel like he might have committed suicide or something like that. But I don't know. Anyways. Um, what else is going on? Um, I, I I haven't been able... I haven't really been... I've been watching Boomerang, but I thought I wanted to review it. But I'm like, I don't know. And I haven't watched the fifth episode. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I want to review it. I, maybe I'll wait till the second season until everybody gets comfortable and their timing is right and it's more of a a, a flow. I, I don't know. It's like... Who are the, who are y'all? Like I don't know. I I I I, I really want to support it because it's Lena Waithe and Holly Berry. You know, black women doing their thing, queer black women doing their thing. I really want to support. Um, 
so I continue to watch but I don't really want to talk about it <laughs> I don't really want to dig down deep I do like the themes that they are um, touching on with mental health and, and men with mommy issues because I don't think that we talk about that a lot I think we should talk about that men with mommy issues I know a few niggas with mommy issues I do I do I know a few niggas with mommy issues you know what and I noticed, and you know what? <laughs> I'm, we, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to do a little research, and we're going to talk about um, men with mommy issues. I did watch this um, little 20, 30-minute episode on CBS Morning about the homeless population in Los Angeles and the homeless population increasing in Los Angeles because the rents keep going up, and people keep buying, um, people keep putting people out, saying that they're going to renovate, giving them 60 days to get out, and then the people not having enough money to find another place, um, or having to sleep in their car. This one woman was sleeping in her car. She had a BMW SUV, and her and her daughter were sleeping in the car, and she she had to quit her job because of some type of illness that she has that she didn't want to talk about, but then she ended up getting her car repossessed because, let me tell you, it's a crazy cycle. She ends up getting her car repossessed because she lost her job. She had to move out of her place because the landlord raised the rent or told her she needed to be out in 60 days because he was going to renovate, and when he renovated he actually raised the rent and that's what they do. So I, I think in Los Angeles now there are some areas where they are putting a cap on rent um, prices and saying how much, because back in the day it used to be they couldn't raise your rent every 30 days, but when it's um, corporations, they have the right to say, we're telling you to get out, you got 60 days to leave, we're selling this place to a corporation and this corporation is gonna renovate and do whatever the fuck. So all of these people are out of homes, sleeping in their cars, um, and this one woman, she lost her job, her and her daughter be driving around, looking for places, cul-de-sacs to sleep, to sleep in, um, so she could be protected. She carries a knife with her and her daughter looks like she's about 13 or 14 years old They have to find places to take showers and to wash up and and it's just like she had to get a title She owned her car, right? But because she didn't have any money She went and got a title loan and now she can't pay the title loan. So then they came to take her car Then she got like a $900 Social Security check for the illness that she has and she only gets $900 a month, but she need, she had to use that $900 to get her damn car out of the repossession place so that she could sleep in her car. Otherwise, she's not going to have a place to sleep. So now she used her money so she could have a place to sleep, but now she don't have no money to eat. It's, it's, it's really, it's really bad. And I'm just looking like more people need to start buying land and houses together and live like... Latin communities, everybody in the house, everybody, everybody in the house, the street I grew up on, it was one family who had three houses on that street, three houses on the street, and they still live there to this day, they still live there to this day, of course my grandmother's house was sold, but whatever, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even going to get into that, I'm not going to even get into that, but anyway, um, what else? Uh, but yeah, go watch it. I put that in the community in my po in my post in the community about LA's homelessness and the rising the rising of homelessness. But it's a very it's a vicious cycle. It's really really sad. What else is going on? And Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is back now. Why not back? But I've been watching it. So can y'all tell me if y'all watch Real Housewives of of Beverly Hills? Why the fuck do these bitches every you know um, Lisa Vanderpump is a Virgo? And why does everybody always think that she's manipulating them? And why do they always feel like she's doing something like, I don't know, like she's manipulating them. Like you bitches are so paranoid that you actually fall into this idea that this woman is manipulating you and y'all end up just shooting yourselves in the foot. I, don't, I believe that Dorit should have told Lisa Vanderpump about the dog she should have gave the dog back to lisa vanderpump's shelter and said the dog is not a good fit for the family you knowing how close they are i don't know why she thought that 
giving it to somebody else and then that person taking it to a shelter a a, a kill shelter at, at that now you know how lisa vanderpump is about them damn dogs you're gonna take her dog that she took took uh, took care of and put a chip in y'all don't think that the damn dog had a chip in it every time a dog goes into like the humane society or whatever they put chips in these dogs okay they put chips in these dogs so in case something like that happens and and everybody's consoling Dorit like Dorit was the victim of some type of abuse at the hands of Lisa Vanderpump. Bitch, you were wrong. And these dogs that you get keep biting your husband. Maybe you need to put your husband in a kill shelter, bitch. Because he can't seem to get along with any dogs. All the dogs bite his ass. You don't need no goddamn dogs. You don't need no damn dogs. She was wrong for that. And I don't understand why everybody... Lisa Renna is... A, she's too She's too much of a busybody to me. She Her ass needs to be cussed the fuck out. She needs to be cussed out. And Taddy is paranoid as hell. To, trying to feel like somebody is using her. Taddy was messy in that. And, and, and Ken had the damn text messages. I need to go watch the end of that again. Because I kind of fell asleep. And I've been watching High Maintenance on HBO... If you haven't watched it, just a regular ass show about this guy who is a, a, a the weed man and he delivers weed. But it's funny because he's really not the main character of the show of each episode. He just pops in when these people who they're telling the story about when these people want some weed and he just ends up there and kind of and they, they kind of have a little storyline going with him. But usually the episodes are really based on another you know it has another story and he just happens um to pop in you understand what i'm saying anyways i really don't have much to talk about today guys so like i said i'm just trying to talk sometimes i get tired of talking and i think i'm going to start making videos monday wednesdays and fridays and then like tuesdays and thursdays leave that open for like maybe reality shows or something like that because i watch marriage boot camp too do y'all watch marriage boot camp i watch that but um, I, I, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm done talking. I really am done talking. What else do I got to talk about? R. Kelly allegation. I said that um, I did write some things down. High maintenance talked about that. I really love high maintenance. If you love a show that is just about regular ass people. And what I really love about high maintenance is that it, when I say that that show is includes all communities all communities that everything from everything like and it's just a regular ass show about people in new is in new york i think they're in new york yeah they are in new york and he's riding around he used to ride around on a bike now he's riding around he lives in this um rv which I've been looking into because t t um, Tanya TKO, she lives in an RV. Did y'all know that? She lives in an RV and she posts the beautiful, most beautiful pictures off the grid. I think that is, I think that's like, if I was single, no dependents, I would probably live like that because I think it's so cool to be able to just drive around, stop where you want to stop. You don't have rent. You don't have utility bills. You got a cell phone bill your gas and maintenance for your car oil changes for your car food and what else has anybody has anyone thought about living like an rv type off the grid type life i'm interested in knowing if you do or you're interested in it watch tanya tko go to her page she posts things like that she lives in an rv i think it's a, i think it's a, i think it's amazing i really do because just the way that this world is i mean the least amount i don't know i'm just i'm all over the place because that thing with that girl yesterday it really really pissed me off and i'm on my way to work and that's the reason why i'm like my whole shit is changing because that shit really pissed me off and to think that that girl made me food i'm really mad about that i'm really mad about that and then i was talking to my friend craig this morning and he was like why the fuck didn't she say that she wasn't talking about you because see in the ims didn't nobody say a name it was the timing so if i would have been like i wasn't what are you talking about i wasn't talking about her but then he was like but she don't know what you saw she doesn't know all of what you saw so she couldn't deny that she was talking about you because she never did say my name it was the timing of 
the conversation and how it went. And I was like, oh, this bitch is talking about me. But it's, it, and I was, t and I was explaining to Craig that it's a lonely space, not trusting people, but it's a hurtful space when you let your guard down just a little bit, just a tiny bit. And then that person betrays that. And, and then, but betrays that be like it, when you're not, when you're not there and you're not, you're not able to see them or see what they're doing and you actually overhear someone talking about you or see someone talking about you. I'm sure that people have heard like I, I that's happened to me before, but with a really good friend, someone I thought was a really good friend found out that she was talking about me behind my back and telling people all strangers all my goddamn business that was really hurtful for me so I think maybe that kind of triggered because it took me a long time to get over that friendship but it I think when I when that everything happened with that girl and me seeing that and then how that girl was always kind of responsive to me and friendly asking me about my kids and shit like that I would rather you, if you don't like me, don't speak to me. Don't, don't do the fake shit because when I find out, cause I will, and everybody does, like it doesn't matter if you talking about somebody, a friend of yours or somebody that you claim that you like or care about and you are, you maybe that you don't like them and you still are forging a friendship or relationship with them and they, they're going to find out they're going to find out. And for me, that was just like, okay. Here you are shocked and an un it was unexpected for me so I'm like I don't know anyways y'all I'm here I need to get my food and stuff like that but y'all have a wonderful day take care of each other protect your energy tell me what y'all about to do this weekend and I'll talk to you later peace